It's August. I haven't walked around the garden with you for a while, so let's do that today. Today, I want to start in this bed, which is my newest bed that I created. This was a bed that I planted last fall using the sheet mulching method. And August is the perfect time to start brainstorming what you want to plant this fall. Fall is an excellent time to plant. Your plants are gonna be so much happier planted in fall than right now. They're not gonna be battling this heat. You're not gonna to have to water as much. So as you're walking through the garden, what I'm thinking about is where do I have holes? Or where can I add a little bit more color? Or maybe even this area looks a little green, like it's just grass. Maybe I can expand an existing garden bed or create a whole new garden bed this fall. What types of plants should I be thinking about including and what plant combinations look good this time of year? So I wanna take you through bed by bed, the things in the garden that are looking really good, the plant combinations and kind of how I thought about them. And maybe that can help inspire you as you're making your lists for your fall planting projects. The goal for this bed was all season interest because it's one of the first beds that you see when you enter our garden. So I wanted to make sure I had a combination of evergreens, deciduous flowering shrubs, fall bulbs and perennials. I line the front of these beds with azaleas. These are Encore Angel. They are a reblooming white compact azalea that stays evergreen. And behind them are hydrangeas, which of course got zapped this year by the freeze and should be much taller, but that will be an update that we see next year. But I really just wanna tell you more about the perennials that are planted in this bed. The perennials in this bed have ended up becoming some of my favorite combinations that I've planted to date. And the reason I love it so much is because it's going to be blooming from early spring all the way until my first frost. For those early spring blooms, I planted daffodil bulbs in the fall. They're gonna be the first things that come up and start blooming and giving color and signs that actually this is a garden bed and not just a patch of mulch. Peonies are incredibly reliable perennials. You plant them once, don't plant them too deep, and they will bloom for you for a hundred years. Also, I can't think of another perennial with flowers bigger than a peony. They're just a showstopper of a plant, but they are a bloom once and then you're done kind of perennial. And so that's why I have them here as this almost middle back part of the border. And I interplanted lots of other perennials around it because the peonies are gonna bloom in spring once and then quit. And all the other perennials that you see here, these are the ones that are going to keep blooming throughout the season and keep this bed looking beautiful. If I scooch over, behind me is an oak leaf hydrangea. That's gonna be the next thing to bloom. This oak leaf hydrangea is ruby slippers. I've left it plenty of room because it is going to get about four feet wide and tall. And so it is the showstopper that is gonna carry us from about that mid spring period all the way into pretty much just now. A few weeks ago, I went ahead and deadheaded. It's putting out new beautiful leaves. And in the fall, these leaves are going to change color and look really spectacular. So this is another great shrub to think about adding if you're trying to bring in lots of color and seasonal interest. Okay, so let's talk about the perennials that I have hiding the peony foliage. So first up, this is Pow Wow Echinacea. You'll see it throughout my garden. For me, it's a very reliable echinacea that just keeps going. It'll start blooming for me about early to mid summer and this is its second flush of blooms. So as long as you're cutting back the old blooms, it'll keep going for a number of months for you. And if you leave the seed heads on into the fall, you'll get goldfinches that come and eat from these and they are just the cutest things in the garden. I stopped deadheading these in August because I just, I wanna see those goldfinches. Okay, that next layer, this poofy white layer is Mongolian Aster. It's another one that I have spread throughout my garden. I actually got it from a neighbor that's growing it. This is one of those slow spreaders that can be divided and replanted throughout your garden. It's so reliable, it's so beautiful. It starts blooming 
earlier than your coneflower. So this will start in your mid spring to late spring and just look so good. I cut it back maybe once this season. I'm, I didn't really stay on top of deadheading this season all too much. We went out on vacation. We had so many things to do. It was a busy summer and you can see these are still looking fabulous. I don't see these sold too much online. I've seen a couple of local nurseries that have them and you can get them from mail order nurseries here and there in stock, but it is such a good plant to get if you see it. Front of the border, I have lamb's ear here. Lamb's ear, if you don't grow this, this is another easy perennial to add that's super reliable. It's nice and fluffy. It's got a great color and it is one of those perennials that once you plant it, it'll slowly spread and it can be divided throughout your garden. So you'll see this all over my garden and it's just a really great plant for that front of the border that gives this silvery color all the time. Behind it is magenta pearl phlox. Magenta Pearl Phlox is a shorter upright phlox. This is its second flush of blooms. This is the first year that I have it planted in the garden and it's definitely exceeded my expectations. It's been a fun plant to grow and I'm definitely going to be on the lookout to add some more for that really fun touch of pink. As we're moving down the border, things look very similar like they did in the July tour. I'll show you very briefly, but I do want to call out one perennial that I'm trying for the first time this year and it's completely shocked me as to how many times it has rebloomed and kept going. This is one that I would plant again and again in the garden. Let me show you. This is Monrovia's Vivid Bright Light Dianthus, and you guys, it's worth every penny. It has been blooming from spring through fall, has not stopped. I have not been on top of deadheading. It does not care. It keeps going with these beautiful pink blooms. I'm absolutely floored by this perennial. I just ran to get a container and my snips. I don't clean up before I do these garden tours for you but I will clean up with you as I'm doing the garden tour. So right here is Echinacea. This is double scoop mandarin, and it is in a desperate need for a bit of a trim. So let's do that while we're talking about it. This is the first perennial that I added to the garden that's in this orangey reddish shade. It's not a shade that I normally plant, and I was at one of my favorite local nurseries, which is Growers Outlet, and they had it there, and I just loved the shape of it, the double form that it had, and it happened to be on sale, so they were three perennials for $15. Um, we all know that you're supposed to plant in drifts of odd numbers, three and five, seven, so I figured, you know what, let me pick this up. Let me plant it. For $15, I can experiment with this color, see if it's just a Michelle bias, or I really don't like this color in the garden. And now that I've planted it, I absolutely love it. And it taught me that it's really worth trying something, planting it in your space before deciding, I don't like reds, I don't like oranges in the garden just go ahead and plant it, especially if you find something on sale. Plant it and find out firsthand because you might find that you absolutely love it. I think the main reason that I really love this echinacea and the red color is because it's right next to this purple. And typically I wouldn't think that a reddish orange goes with the purple, but it's, it's gorgeous. I just really love this combination here. This is Roseanne Geranium. This has been a workhorse in the garden all summer long. It just keeps blooming, blooming, blooming. Lots of flower power out of this one perennial. This is another one that I wouldn't hesitate to add in other places because it's such a top performing perennial. This is a tree peony. Last year, this tree peony gave me a heart attack because it started looking so bad in late summer. I thought it was dying but it's really just the time when leaves start to look crispy. Your plant is not dying. It's just pretty much done looking good for the season. What I don't wanna do this time of year is try to overwater this or water it every day because the leaves are looking crispy. Honestly, some plants, this is just their crispy season. They had a great run, 
this one leafed out. It was one of the first things to leaf out in my garden. And so it's just going through its natural aging process. Not everything is going crispy in the garden. Luckily, there's still some things that look good like this tricurtis. This is Autumn Glow tricurtis a really gorgeous perennial and also one that is on my must grow list. Look at that gorgeous bloom. This is also a slow spreader. It's got gorgeous, gorgeous leaves. And I mean, anything that has gorgeous leaves and a great bloom and spreads and is reliable makes it onto my favorite perennials list. As we move on, I'm going to have to ask you to look past all the weeds. This area right here is really a dappled shade border. It's new-ish, I think it's about a year and a half old, and I'm still tweaking it to get it to the place where I like it to be. A lot of the plants are still filling in, and I'm still trying to see which plant combinations play well together. I love having a nice full border. Of course, Sushi had to crash the video, but it's just, I just feel like it's not there yet. Like I love a lush hosta garden bed vibe with some hydrangeas on the backdrop. I'm still trying to figure it out. I feel like it looked much better earlier this season, but right now this really isn't its peak prime time, so I'm still working through it. I don't know, you probably have areas in your garden like that too where you're like, it's okay, but it's just not there yet. So I'm trying to figure out what I can do to make it there. When I do figure it out, I will share that, but for now, I'm still experimenting. There's some hostas in here, there's some aruncus in here, but all of that was interesting earlier this year. And now things are looking a little crispy, except for the Pullman area, which just always looks good. Okay, so now I'm standing in what I've been calling the girls' butterfly garden. It's right next to their playground, which is kind of behind you and the reason it was planted was to attract lots of butterflies and get them outdoors because isn't that every mother's goal is just to get their kids outside to go play instead of watching tv anyways you'll see a couple of holes here and there in the garden and that's because i'm still experimenting with perennial varieties Last year, I planted one of these Millennium Alliums. I've planted the larger fall bulb Alliums before, and they did not come back for me and rebloom. So I was super skeptical about planting these summer blooming Alliums because I just assumed that I would have bad luck with them and they'd be like annuals. But now that they're coming back, I can commit to a drift here and fill in this space. I also added this penicetum last year. This is little bunny penicetum. And I wanted to make sure that it was happy in my soil and in my conditions before adding a drift of them. But it is so cute and I'm definitely going to add some more. I've been filling these little holes with dahlias, just cheapo tubers that I found at Aldi that were labeled, I think, kind of like a front of the border. Dahlia. And so those have kind of been taking up space and providing color for the holes in the garden that I left because I was still experimenting with varieties and kind of what I wanted the garden to look like when it grew up. If you twisted my arm and made me pick a favorite perennial that's planted in this bed, I would say the kind of MVP of this bed is this phlox that's blooming right here. This phlox is on its second flush it starts blooming earlier than other phloxes. This is opening act pink dot phlox and the opening act series from Proven Winners starts blooming in that kind of mid to late spring time frame. It opens up right as the oak leaf hydrangeas are opening up, if that helps give you a sense of when it blooms, while other tall garden phlox typically bloom later into summer. This one is having its second flush in summer, which is a much smaller flush, but it still provides a lot of color. And it's just a really impressive perennial. It grows really large and in charge. I've divided it in the past and I've only had it here for two years and it reblooms. So if I was to pick just one perennial in this bed that is kind of the MVP, opening act pink dot phlox gets that little prize. So earlier I had showed you that shade bed and I told you that it just wasn't coming together the way that I was envisioning, the way I was hoping that it would, and then I'm still tweaking it. 
This is a bed that I had just tweaked this spring. My problem with this bed was that mid spring and kind of this time of year, there were gaps in blooms and I just kind of wanted to see continual blooms in this bed. So I shared and documented on YouTube how I'm redoing this bed and I can post the video right here for you guys to go back and see what it looked like before. And this is kind of the after. So these are Atlas roses that I planted earlier this year. They have done amazingly. They would be horrible cut flower roses because the rose only lasts about a day and then the petals kind of fall off. But the color and the number of blooms they put out, they are totally worth having in the garden because they are so floriferous. They're constantly putting out new blooms and the color is just such a perfect color that seems to go with everything in the garden. Also, they have an intoxicating scent that's just absolutely wonderful. I am living it up right here, sitting in these roses. And then lastly, and I would argue most importantly, when it comes to picking out roses, especially if you live in a humid climate like I do, you wanna make sure you are planting disease resistant roses. Otherwise, it is just going to be a battle for you to keep black spot at bay, to keep them healthy, to keep them blooming. And these roses, brand new, haven't had a chance to establish. There is almost no black spot on them. They are absolutely incredible. I now know why everyone is in love with them because they just do what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to stay healthy, they're supposed to bloom, and they're supposed to look beautiful, and they definitely do that. Front of the roses, I planted denim and lace Russian sage. I had a feeling that the combination of the peachy color of the roses with the light blue purple color of Russian sage was gonna be absolutely stunning. Previously, I had artemisia in this bed and I absolutely love the silvery foliage and I wanted to keep something that still had that touch of silver in it. So I went with Russian sage. I'm so glad I did because this was just perfect. And then the lowest layer in this planting is one of my favorites. I talk about it all the time. It is from the Magic Show Proven Winner series. It is White Wands Veronica and it is such a good one. This is another plant that has just constantly been putting out blooms. The first flush is the largest flush, but honestly, you just can't go wrong with a plant that is constantly blooming like this. And I've done nothing. I don't, I haven't fed this bed once. It just goes and goes. It's incredible. Then as we move a little bit farther down the border, I do want to call out this yarrow right here. If you've planted yarrow before and been disappointed because it flopped or it spread like crazy, give this a try, guys. This yarrow is from the Firefly series. It is Firefly Moonshine, maybe? Moonlight? It's the yellow one. There's also a peach one. They're absolutely incredible because they stay upright. They don't spread like crazy and they just slowly fill in a space and keep blooming throughout the season. I feel like a broken record, but I'm really just pointing out to you my favorite plants. So if you're kind of making your planting list for fall and thinking about your holes that you have in your garden, these are kind of the reliable plants that I've really enjoyed having in my garden and would replant if I moved and had to start all over. I'm coming kind of around the border now and I wanted to give this hydrangea just a little bit of spotlight because this is the first year that it's looked this good this late into the summer. It has aged into this deep purple gorgeous color. This is Endless Summer Bloomstruck Hydrangea. It's never aged to such a pretty hydrangea and I don't know what I did this year. Not sure I can repeat it in the future. So I'm just going to take a minute to appreciate how gorgeous it is right now because who knows if it'll ever do this again, but man, does it look so good right now. Again, in this bed, you'll see Pawa White Echinacea repeated. I'm kind of boring. If I find a perennial that works for me and is beautiful and reblooms well, it's going everywhere. So anywhere that you see a white echinacea, it is likely powwow white if it's in my garden. But that doesn't mean I'm not a glutton for punishment because I will retry varieties that have done poorly for me in different spots just to really test out if it's me and the location that I'm picking 
or it's the variety and the plant just doesn't seem to like my garden. So that's why you'll still see powwow wildberry sprinkled throughout the garden because I really want it to work. I love this pink color. I loved this pink color even before the Barbie movie came out and made everybody pink crazy. It's just a gorgeous color and I would have more of them in my garden if they seem to like me, but we'll see. Maybe they'll like this spot and be happy here. Also, let me show you that gorgeous pink perennial right there. This phlox right here is from the opalescence series from Proven Winners. I can't remember the variety, but I'll put it back here when it comes to mind. This is also its second bloom. It blooms a little bit later than the opening act series. So it really starts in true early to mid summer and then reblooms again in late summer. There's no sign of powdery mildew on either of the phloxes in my garden. I'm definitely in an area that has a lot of powdery mildew that has a lot of humidity. So I would definitely recommend looking at the Proven Winners Opalescence or Opening Act Flock Series if you're looking for a flock. Depending on the hole that you have in your garden or when you need to see those blooms, these guys are awesome. Also, you could always hear chicken noises when I'm in this area talking about this phlox or showing this part of the garden. The ladies are right behind me. I am working on putting together more chicken content, especially as we move into fall and winter and the flowers die down. There's kind of less to show you in the garden unless I'm planting something. If you've been curious about chickens, if you've been thinking about adding them to your family, I hope you don't mind putting your questions in the comments. That will really help me to just make content that's more relevant about things that you might be interested in. So as I'm planning my chicken content, I can keep your questions in mind and be sure that I'm answering them. I'm really rounding out the last of the backyard here and I think I'm gonna end it here. I'm going to skip the veggie garden and the path that leads up to the veggie garden because this video is getting way too long anyways. But as you're thinking about your garden space where you might be seeing holes, if you're looking for a perennial that is about to bloom and looks really good right now, I would like to suggest Autumn Joy Sedum, also Neon Sedum, Upright Sedums this time of year look amazing. I haven't yet opened, but the buds are just forming. They have this limey, light green. I love it easy going, drought tolerant, low maintenance perennial that I never really do anything to other than propagate or divide. This one is such an easy one to spread all around your garden. Definitely look at sedum. This is the last area that I really wanted to show you and I feel like I haven't shown much of recently. This is the path that we redid the side yard. This used to be completely all lawn and we mulched it over added a path down the middle, and then added in these cut flower gardens on either side. Obviously, I did a bad job staking the sunflowers, and so they're leaning a little bit, which is why I'm kind of crooked, but it has been so fun having a dedicated cut flower space. Others have suggested that I create this, and I'm like, I don't need it. It's gonna look so empty in the winter. What do I need this for? But now that I have a dedicated space to plant my zinnias and my dahlias and my amaranth and my status and my sunflowers, I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. This has been so fun. This year, I just planted them in the ground. There's no any sort of raised bed structure. I'm getting a lot of weeds. So next year, I'm really gonna be thinking about how I can create more permanent beds right here and raise them up a little bit so that the weed pressure is much lower and that makes my life easier. Anyways, it looks like it is actually starting to rain here, which is like a hallelujah moment because it has been so dry. So I am going to cut this video off here. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel. If this is your first time seeing me, I hope this was helpful and I hope maybe you learned something. I would love it if you hit that subscribe button and stuck around for more of my garden shenanigans. And as always, I will see you in the next video.